Hello and welcome to Voice Bites from Damn Good Voices. Today I'm joined by musical theatre royalty, Kerry Ellis. Hey, Kerry. <laughs> Hi, thanks for having me. This is exciting. It is. I'm so excited to talk to you. I'm, I didn't know how to introduce you because I feel like you've been introduced so many times over your career that you've probably heard every sort of introduction, but I thought, keep it simple. I like that. Short and sweet. It's kind of, it says what it is on the tin, you know? <laughs> exactly. How many years have you been doing it now? Just to start off, set the scene. Ooh, blimey. Uh, well, I've been in theatre 20 odd years. 20 odd years plus and it's evolved my career has evolved over the years and and now I'm finding different avenues especially right now um, but especially over the last 10 years I've gone into more music and concerts and um, voiceovers and it's, it's been really nice podcasts a um, bit of radio and I love the variety I love that I have different things and, and my job takes me to different places oh, definitely no it keeps it really interesting i suppose i should probably maybe set the scene a little bit just for people who might not know who you are i find it hard to believe if you're in any sort of performing arts industry that you know who you are. <laughs> uh, but you started out in we will rock you is that right well i actually started out in my fair lady before we will rock you which was yeah which was at the national um uh with martin mccutcheon and um it was huge and i was her understudy and she got a bit poorly and I went on and it was a big, huge paper story. Um, and then obviously from My Fair Lady, I got to play Meet in, in We Will Rock You and create that role. That's brilliant. And like from then, you just haven't really stopped working. You've done all the big names in theatre, particularly with Wicked. I mean, would you say that that is what maybe most people get excited to talk to you about? Or is that not correct? Because I know that you, you're the first British alphabet, so that's a pretty big deal. I am, yeah. Oh, definitely. I mean, it's it's definitely something people want to talk about. I mean, I, even now, you know, and, and I think the show came out, what, 10, 15 years ago, even longer on Broadway. Um, and I was fortunate to play the role over there too. But people still talk about it and I think it's the power of the music you know I still sing those songs in concerts and it's what people want and I've sung Define Gravity all over the world and the response to the song is unbelievable so massive credit to Stephen Schwartz because you know he knows how to write a belter. Oh definitely <laughs> absolutely and you touch on like the concerts uh, you're doing a lot more of that now aren't you you've done some stuff with Brian May you're also doing solo stuff like what tell me more about that yeah concerts have become a massive part of my life um they started to grow after I did Wicked um I did my first album with Brian Wicked in Rock uh, which led to anthems and we got signed by Decca Records um and then we've gone on to tour the world we've toured the UK um and release more albums, uh, be with different labels. And it's, it, I, I do really enjoy that. I love going and singing a lot of musical songs in one, in one place at one time. You know, you get to sing all the big hits in one evening, which is great. You know, you kind of get all the best bits of a, of a musical without having to do the show eight times a week. It's lovely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely. Less, maybe a bit less draining than if you were to do the full show. <laughs> yeah, although when you get all those big songs in one evening, usually in a show, there may be one or two, but in, in an evening where you're doing all the big hits, like Memory, I Dreamed a Dream, Defying Gravity, No One But You, you know, all these big songs, you know, you've got to do them all in one night. But I like that. I kind of enjoy that challenge. We've spoken about the concerts you did with Brian May you also do a podcast which um I'll use this to segue into voiceovers a little bit later because I feel like this is a really good thing for other voiceover artists to do but how did the podcast come about? So I I actually worked for a radio station called Encore Radio and I had my own little um program on a Sunday for a couple of hours and I did that for about a couple of years I think the program ran for and then the the people that ran the station um, got together to do um, a podcast called Acting Up, and I was one of the guest presenters, and and that was really fun, and I enjoyed that. And then I kind of always had in the back of my mind that I would try and do my own podcast at some point, and it, a time just got away with me. I didn't, I just couldn't schedule it in. I couldn't fit it in. And then obviously lockdown hit, and it was the perfect time because I thought actually you know people like myself are going to be sat at home they're going to want to talk about the industry and what's going on and and they can't go anywhere so let's talk over zoom let's do this podcast now and that that was my impetus to do it and it's been so brilliant I've loved it and to be able to speak to people that I've 
either worked with over the years or I've admired has been just a dream. And, and some of the chats with people like Beverly Knight, I've just spoke to Leia Salonga, uh, Alfie Bow, Kimberly Walsh, and to talk about the industry um, and lockdown and their highs and their lows has just been an absolute dream. And I've just loved it. I really have. Mm, it's great. I mean, I was talking to Jodie Steele a few weeks ago and we had a question come in on the live stream about how great it is for aspiring performers now that we have such amazing access to people already established in their careers like yourself, people aspiring to, to be in your position, get such great inside knowledge that maybe you wouldn't have got 20 years ago or something. Yeah, and I really wanted to, to talk about things that people don't hear about, you know, like the, the high points and the low points, but also those times when you've done something huge, like a massive performance or you've played a really big arena. And then the aftermath, I wanted to talk about how that feels and, and balancing like a normal life with theatre. And I wanted to, you know, talk about the things that I feel and with other performers, see what how what affects them and also share that with people. And the response that we've had has been amazing. And people have said, yeah, it's really got us through lockdown and it's given us an insight into people's lives and, and to the industry and and how, how how normal people are, I think, has been the, the biggest one and how people can relate to to these big stars that they see up on a stage. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a great podcast. If anyone, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out. It'll be linked in the description below. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> that's all right. I'm working on season two, actually, and it, it's it's been really it's been really interesting because obviously season one was just we just tried it out, and then the response was was brilliant. So working on season two, I feel like you know we're already a step ahead, and just the guests that we're getting on is oh, it's it's so exciting. Have you fact? Did you find it easier? to start a podcast because I know that all performers would probably find it easy to to have a chat about their passions but did you find that it was maybe easier because you had done lots of voiceover work beforehand because I know you've done you've done the always uh period poverty campaign and we were just speaking about you've done Gillette you've done video games as well so you're quite experienced in in that sense do you think that made it easier to to do a podcast yeah, absolutely. I mean, you're always gaining confidence in, in new environments. And I think performers are quite adaptable to being in different situations. I think the toughest part of, of the podcast was suddenly being on the other side and having to instigate the questions. And usually I'm I'm interviewed. So to suddenly have to drive the, uh, the chat and the questions was a bit nerve wracking. However, once we started, it, it was... Um, it was pretty simple and I just felt like I was having a chat with people that I knew and inspired by and loved and I just really enjoyed it so I didn't see it as a I, di I didn't get too nervous you know so it was okay yeah that's good that's when that you know it flows the best is when it just feels like a chat and you're like oh were we recording it was <laughs> Oh, what did I say? Oh, should I share that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so talk to me about the differences between stepping into a recording studio and singing as opposed to stepping into a, a voiceover booth and doing a voiceover job. Yeah, it's a, it's a strange one because it's actually a very familiar environment. So a, a, a recording studio when you're doing vocals is somewhere I'm very comfortable. I can walk in. I'm very confident. Um, I know what I want sound wise. I know what how to interact with, you know, the people who are mixing and, and I know what I need walking into a voiceover for the first time was was pretty scary because it was a it was something I'd not done before I didn't quite know how it was going to work and you want to be professional and you want to look like you know what you're doing and and make the clients feel confident so I was quite nervous and it, it it's it's a slightly different environment. One that you sit down, that's strange. I know that's so simple, but in a singing, when you're singing, you usually stand up or I do. And then to suddenly sit down and be in, in quite a small room sometimes and, and literally just be communicated through the microphone, just chatting is weird, you know, or it was weird. But obviously I've got used to it now with doing, I've done a few now and it's been, I, I really enjoy it. I like the simplicity of just concentrating on one thing. And, you know, the the text is in front of you. Everyone's so nice. Obviously, they want you to be efficient and, and professional. And But everybody's really lovely. It's like the podcast world. Everyone's nice in the voiceover world. There's no, there's no 
there's no drama it's just you get on and do it and and it's it's been great I've loved it yeah absolutely Did, have you found it in the early days was it hard to rein yourself in a bit volume wise because you're used to filling massive theatres and then suddenly like you know that the mic is literally just there and you can just talk at a normal level or were you so much of a pro that you're like no I know exactly what to do I have broken a few mics in my time I'm quite a loud vocalist um with singing wise I have I have damaged a few I think in my time but um I don't know I, th I think it was all just very straightforward I was really lucky to be led um or to be guided in my first um my first voiceover which actually I think was a Gillette advert and they were super nice and it, it it just felt very natural I think because I felt comfortable being in a studio it was a case of just I just have to read what's on the page and be directed which is also something I'm used to you know being in an audition for for a musical I will be directed with text so it was the same kind of thing I could just not see the people I could just hear their voices so I was okay with that you know and I'm I'm used to being asked to do something slightly different or you know change the speed of something or, or so that that was okay yeah was the video game very different that you did were you having was it one of those where you had to make lots of weird noises and stuff? it was <laughs> i really enjoyed the video game yeah it is it is different because i do loads of oh i can't speak loads of different um characters and loads of different voices which was fun it was a lot of fun that made me laugh a lot because they would put a, a picture up on a screen so you could see the visual and then obviously you've got to create a voice to match it and that would make me laugh because if anyone could have seen my face and the faces that I would pull, was pulling I mean I'm so glad it was just the voice but I really enjoyed that because you can kind of you can be brave and, and go a bit outside your comfort zone and be you know a bit crazy and I really enjoyed that it's tough though it's quite tough on the voice gaming because it's it's you're in there for quite a long time and, and it can be quite demanding you can be doing, you can be doing lots of shouting and lots of um, high pitched or screams or you, you need to do all these different sounds so that was that was quite intense oh definitely I feel like it can be quite nerve-wracking in some ways because you don't want to look stupid but then once you've released yourself from that and you're like I know all that matters is my voice then you are free to you know <laughs> get all yeah. cool with it and you do you do the actions too which is funny <laughs> that's why they need a video in there to show the show your actions <laughs> yeah that would be so i'd tune into that that'd be funny <laughs> how do you know as well whether you've been booked as kerry ellis the superstar or they've just heard your voice through and they've gone they don't know your work and they've gone you're kerry i've often wondered how people in the public eye do that because you're like have I been booked for you know because they want me or is it because they want my voice well either way I'd be thrilled <laughs> um I think uh I think the voiceover was was quite new to me it was all it was a different world for me I'd not really done much before so, and I don't think I'm particularly known as a I don't know if people would know my speaking voice as such prior to podcasting um it wasn't as familiar so I think it probably was uh, about just the voice reel that they'd heard possibly. And have you noticed your voice has changed over the years? Because um, I know for lots of voiceover artists, even if you've been doing it for a very long time, you might have to change up your voice reel because your voice does change. Um, have you noticed that even with singing um, or with voiceovers as well? Oh yeah, I mean, my, my singing voice has definitely changed over the years um, and my technique has changed over the years. And I think the same with, with doing voiceovers. I think you just gain more experience so you, maybe speak slightly differently when you're in a studio um so i think it does develop yeah absolutely and i i think that just comes with confidence though and, and knowing knowing what you sound like i i remember listening to myself speak on 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 a recording when i was much younger and hated the sound of my own voice and then i've got used to the sound so i know what works and what doesn't work now i'm now i'm a bit older i think that just comes with age and confidence yeah definitely and knowing sort of i guess what your product is because we've done lots of voice bites on this channel around sort of knowing what you're selling and how you do have to update it and be in tune with what you're doing so it's not just reading words off a page it is actually very difficult and as you said with video games it can get so tiring and i suppose probably singers know better than most voiceover artists starting out about vocal health because um, you, you're probably taught it in, in your training and stuff like that and you have to but for voiceover artists I know when I started out there was never any real training no one told you about what you should be doing before or shouldn't be doing um, you sort of had to learn on the job as you go. Do you have any uh, warm-ups that you do that you could show me that I could join in with for 
the voiceovers. Not necessarily singing, because I'm not a good singer, but... <laughs> yeah, you know, I always make sure that I'm I'm talking a lot in the morning, which my husband is thrilled about, obviously. But, I, you know, if I'm on my way to a voiceover, I'll get on the phone or I will, you know, I, I'll try and speak as much, you know, with anybody that I'm passing, I'll make sure I say hello, or just to try and get your voice moving. And then I will also hum a little bit because it's just what I'm used to doing, just um, kind of just kind of noises really like a mm, 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 and just to try and get it moving so that when you turn up suddenly all the phlegm doesn't suddenly stick to your throat you know you you had it moving because when you do start making louder noises the voice warms up and the blood starts pumping and stuff moves around so you could get you could start to cough so it just it you, you don't want to shock it and loads of water loads of water on on the way in you know prior to the to the voiceover um and also ideally a really good night's sleep before hopefully no wine <laughs> the night before and, you know so that you're you're hydrated you're ready to go and yeah just just a lot of talking I think for me and maybe a few sirens but a bit of humming that's it really a few tongue twisters oh yeah tongue twisters they're the best people look at me on the on the train like I'm crazy like warming up but um you've got to do it you have got to do it. As silly as it seems, you have got to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, and before we we go, I just wanted to talk about the drive-in. You've done you've done a drive-in show recently, haven't you? I have. Yeah. I, um, it was last week, and um, it was the first one. I think it was on the day that we were allowed to perform outside. Um, and I think the drive-in cinemas have been going. Um, a few weeks earlier but suddenly there was this movement to be able to sing outside so all these people came up in their cars and there was a couple of us on stage and we sang and they can tune in through their radio and also hear a little bit on the PA but um, that must be so strange how was it singing to cars <laughs> it was weird however it was actually a lot more responsive and interactive than I thought it was going to be. People were honking their horns, flashing their, their lights. They were like waving their, their window wipers and people were have their hands out the windows. I mean, it was brilliant. It was so much fun and it was a lot more exciting than I thought it was going to be because I thought literally people are going to sit in their cars, windows up, you know, locked in. I thought that was, I'm going to hear nothing, but it was great. It was really good. And I think people were ready for some kind of live interaction you know they've really felt like a community and an, and, a, and a and a buzz they felt like something electric happening and, and it was it was well worth the wait oh that's brilliant have you got any more coming up or is that you done for now well I've got a few live streams coming up um, I'm doing something at the Coliseum with an actual band which is exciting um, and that's going to be streamed. Um, and I, there's a there's a couple of little things coming up. But I, I think the problem at the moment is it's changing all the time. So for producers, it's hard for them to to book, um, you know, with with no guarantee. Um, there's a couple of things, some outdoor concerts coming up in September. So hopefully they'll they'll happen. Yeah, oh, I hope so. Everyone's gagging to get back to how we were. Aren't and we? <laughs> so, but hopefully, yeah, it'll it'll be sorted out soon it won't be gone forever that's what I keep telling myself absolutely yeah we'll all be fine we'll all be out there singing and dancing speaking shouting <laughs> well listen thanks so much for joining me today Kerry it's great chatting to you pleasure thank you so much this has been exciting yeah not at all and thank you guys for watching Voice Bites I'm Joel Wood and you've been listening to the brilliant Kerry Ellis uh, don't forget to check out her podcast it'll be linked down below and also her voiceover profile as well on Damn Good Voices website and yeah tune in next time we've got plenty more coming very soon see you soon bye Kerry <laughs>